Hi, this is John Reed, JDOD.com. Guess who I got? I got as Kazi. How you doing? Very good, thanks, John. This guy does a lot of work around development issues and developer marketing. You're kind of a marketing guy, but you want to understand technology. How, how does that work? Well, I think uh, for developer marketing, the first thing you have to know is you don't market to developers. You, you give them the software that they can get their hands on, and they can build stuff on it. And once they see the value and they see the power of it, uh, that I've been a developer most of my life, and uh, I was on the MSDN tap. I would get their CD, I would take the software I wanted, throw all the marketing stuff out, and focus just on the software that I need. So I want to make sure that we can do the same with uh, what we are doing with HANA, and then in the future with SUP and Gateway. Experience SAP HANA and the developer center that will be soon be coming is an example of what developers can do with this. So I've got two views on this issue that are not totally complementary to SAP, but one of them is I, I really believe that SAP's future involves engaging more of these individual developers and very talented smaller shops that are out there that are outside of SAP's current partner ecosystem to a large degree. And I feel that many of them are kind of ex either feel excluded or alienated from development on SAP right now, including even stuff with stuff in Gateway. So do you agree? What are your reactions to those comments? So I do think that uh, we've had uh, more of a ABAP and Java view of the world, of our developer base. And I think there's a large set of developers, even within that base and outside of it, when you take the Apple developers, you take the RIM developers, I don't know how long they'll be RIM developers, but, uh, and you take uh, any other Ruby framework, Spring framework, any of the developers in there. The individual developer, Apple, for instance, has shown very clearly that's a model that works in consumer software. It's yet to be proven, in enterprise software, but I do believe 100%, and this is my personal opinion, I do believe 100% that it's important for SAP to be able to capture this, this audience, and capture it in a way that makes it easy for them to develop and easy for them to build applications, and then once they have applications ready, a place for them, a channel for them to be able to sell these applications to SAP, existing SAP customers or new SAP customers, and our pricing and uh, models have to be built in such a way that we allow this to happen. We're still working through all of those issues. So if you and I sit down again at Sapphire, we're going to make some progress on this, we're going to see some interesting stories? A for effort, we're certainly going to try, and I will take the A right now. I hope to make progress, and uh, this is, I'm not trying to avoid the question, this, it's not easy. I will say it's not easy, but uh, we are definitely we are definitely gunning for it. There is uh, a top level uh, intent, very clear in SAP, that hasn't always been as evident before. Sure, sure. What do you think is the biggest challenge around it? Is it culture, is it marketing, is it license issues, is it legal stuff? What, what is the challenge? I think it's a little bit of, the, of everything and it, if, if it boils down to the culture. If the culture is one that is looking to monetize solutions quickly that is looking to uh, uh, control what the developers are doing. And I think the whole intent of platform is you make a platform available for others to stand on. And it's our platform and it should be every developer's imagination. Whether that developer's in a customer, whether the developer's with a partner or as an individual developer. And uh, adoption of the platform should be the primary driver, and I've seen typically monetization tends to come first before adoption. Now, Vishal Sikha has got an important keynote tomorrow, and you're someone who I know tends to roll up your sleeves in the time before that to try to get things clarified. By the time people watch this video, the keynote will be over. I know you can't really do a preview reveal, but what are your thoughts on what the themes are that are going to be emphasized and what people should be taking away from this show? I think. Uh, it's, it's good that this video gets released afterwards. And it's, and why would that be? And, and uh, so we can take a look and see how right or wrong I was about what content actually makes it in there. 24 hours to the keynote or some such time is a lot of time in HANA time. And, and a lot can change by then. But having said that, I do know the key themes and one of the big areas that he's going to focus on is what is the value created by HANA in, in the customer base. We'll talk about 
customers have, who have achieved significant performance. And one of the challenges that he'll lay out is to see if customers and IT organizations can all stand up and try to achieve performance of some of the leaders in the space. And we'll highlight some of the leaders in the space as well. And that value comes uh, not just from speed, but from a whole bunch of different things in terms of uh, simplicity of the query, the, no the number of questions that are being asked, whether the question is pre-imagined or, or if you have, uh, today in typical an analytics, you have to pre-imagine every question and build a query and build indexes and build aggregates. Now, what if you had the whole universe of questions that you could ask, but you didn't have to build all this uh, infrastructure in the first place? to be able to support that. So not only could you ask any question anywhere within that universe, which for a simple data set we, we did a back of the envelope calculation was 263 trillion questions. Try Think of trying to pre-imagine all those questions. And it's the value that HANA brings in of not having to uh, worry about all the infrastructure and the flexibility and the dynamism that you can do to pick any query and run any query almost as fast as anything else uh, without having to pre-build it. I think when it comes to HANA, SAP needs to stop talking so much about speed. We know it's fast. We talk more about industry use cases and business value. Do you think, do you agree with that? Do you think Vishal agrees with that? I, I think he completely agrees with that. But understand, he's also the technologist. He will highlight the technology. And uh, there are other people in the company that should be talking about industry and business value, and they're doing that. And he highlights uh, what makes it different, what's the secret sauce under the covers and under the hood. He will, having said that, uh, I think one of the things that uh, you've seen is the push is clearly from his side in driving this into smart meter analytics for the utility industry, into SNOP, into, so all of these other aspects that you're now seeing is clear recognition of what are the different scenarios in the different industries that make it make for a killer app. And uh, even simple things like the COPA accelerator and CRM customer segmentation. All right, well, we'll find out about 24 hours when you see it live and when you see my reactions on Twitter, so you'll know soon. All right, thanks a lot, guys. It's great to be here.